so uh, well, uh, hello everyone in Cairns, and uh, first thing I've got to say is congratulations. I love these events, and uh, um, I bumped into Troy last, uh, when was it? It was last Friday, last Friday. in Cairns, beautiful part of the world, um, and it's fantastic that you guys are um, um, getting into this up there. So, a couple of thoughts that um, I hope are uh, helpful. Um, the first thing I'd say is that um, ideas and entrepreneurial energy aren't defined by geography. Um, the fact that uh, you guys in that part of the world are uh, out there doing it is really uh, the main thing. It's, it's uh, so important. Um, I talk to lots of people in different parts of the world who are doing the kind of things that you guys are trying to do. And everyone's got a chip on their shoulder to a certain uh, extent. So I imagine some of uh, you guys up there would be thinking, ah, oh, well, if only I was in Brisbane or maybe the Gold Coast. Um, because that's the hotbed of innovation within, uh, you know, to our flight. Um, oh. Then when I'm in Brisbane, I talk to people in Brisbane who say, well, if only I was in Sydney or Melbourne. And when I talk to people in Sydney and Melbourne, if only I was in Silicon Valley or New York City or Beijing or whatever. So the first point I really want to make is that uh, you guys are in the perfect place right now because we really do live in a connected world. And this is the thing I pointed out at my little chat up there um, earlier in the week. We really live in a connected economy and hopefully you guys uh, understand that. Now that's good and bad. It's, um, it's good because you sitting up there in Cairns can communicate with anyone in the world. You can uh, connect with an amazing marketplace. You can connect with amazing people wherever they happen to be. Uh, the other part of that equation is you're also exposed to uh, competitors who are out there trying to do the same kinds of things that you guys are doing. So it's a double-edged sword um, and the only way to get on top of that is to get on the front foot and um, I respect what you guys are doing there. Now um, I've had a bit of a history in this whole um, entrepreneurial game. I've generally won more than I've lost and i got to say, it's a lot of fun doing both. Um, <laughs> let me assume that most of you guys are sort of at the, um, at the beginning of something. Um, if you weren't, you'd be sitting here on a uh, silly phone talking to you guys, telling you how to do it, I suppose. <laughs> um, some of the assumptions about entrepreneurship, I think, need challenging. Some of the hurdles you face. The big one, and this goes back forever, is about, well, I've got a good idea, but um, I just don't have the money to do it. Um, bullshit, I say. <laughs> I started What If with no money. Um, knowing that, um, and begging a little bit off a few people, uh, I developed a business model that really didn't need the money. So the accepted wisdom in this game is um, you fall into the arms of venture capitalists and um, with all due respect to all the VCs hanging around there tonight, um, there are always different ways to find the money. And what I find, what I've found throughout my whole career is that if you've got a good idea, uh, first you attract the energy of people who can help you uh, in all sorts of ways 
And uh, if it is a really good idea, then the money just kind of turns up on your doorstep. So don't, uh, my first bit of advice is don't assume that you have to get in a queue on your knees, bended down, uh, groveling for money. Find a way to do it without doing that and you'll be a much happier person. Not only that, you'll end up with a bigger slice of the business. So that's the money. Um, now what we're talking about money um, you really, in my experience, the people who start successful businesses believe in it for all the right reasons and making money may not be the major reason. Um, the longer I go on, on in life, the more I find myself wanting to give back. Um, there are many fine things we can do in this life and uh, I find being entrepreneurial in a social sense is more rewarding in a lot of way than just making the bucks. Of course you need a bit behind you to do these things but not necessarily. So uh, what is it that really drives you is a question I think you should all ask yourself, why are you here? What's the, uh, what are your personal values? Um, and, and are your business goals aligned with your personal values? If they're not, it ain't gonna work, kiddies, I can tell you. Um, it might work up to a point, but until you really know who you are, and why, why you're doing this, um, it's, it's going to be a struggle. That's not easy. It took me a fair while. Uh, now, when I started What If, I've started lots of businesses, but of course, What If is the one that everyone wants to talk about. Uh, that was about making money on the surface. But there was also um, a realization that uh, what if made better uses of existing resources? So instead of building a whole new hotel, uh, let's make better use of the resources that are already there. It was exploiting, um, it was exploiting, well, you understand, um, hopefully you've all looked through what if, if you're not, you can go home now. Um, <laughs> but, um, it was taking in hotel inventory that was going to waste. It's like um, selling mullet off the beach before they go sour. There's an asset there that can be uh, turned into money that's to everyone's value, to the customer and to the hotel owner. And that's not a new concept, it never has been. And lots of people are exploiting that idea in a whole lot of different ways. So. Um, we live on a planet with finite resources. Um, we apparently have infinite demand for those resources. So the people who can um, find ways to use those resources more cleverly um, and stop stuffing up the planet uh, are the ones who will be the heroes in five years, 10 years, and 20 years from now. Mm. Uh, the other, the other little point about starting a business is the fear of failure. Um, it looms large in the minds of a lot of people. Um, I don't see failure as a problem, I see it as a learning experience. The, the main point here is don't make any really big stuff ups because that gets you into trouble. You lose a lot of money, it pisses off your wife, you know, go to sell the house and all that sort of stuff. Make as, make as many little mistakes as you can and learn from every one of them. And this is part of a business model. Um, this is the way I think the world is evolving. The next point is uh, collaborate. Now it's very difficult when you come up 
with a business idea, who do you talk to about it? Who do you trust? And there are lots of people you can't trust, but um, increasingly, um, I find it's much easier to toss the idea out there, and even if uh, I can't exploit it, somebody else will. So it's a bit of a leap of faith, but uh, tying stuff down with lawyers and contracts um, is very uh, time consuming and expensive. So my view is uh, be open, be open, invite, uh, give your ideas away, be generous with your ideas, share them. Um, and you will find other people sharing ideas with you. And that was contracting, doing a bit of uh, software development for a few people. And I stumbled into a guy who happened to be a, uh, he ran a hotel. It was, um, it's actually the uh, resort that Clive Palmer currently owns. There you go. Um, the Hyatt at, um, uh, wherever it is, up the north coast of the Sunshine Coast. So this guy told me that he had a problem, that um, he wanted me to devise some kind of algorithm to uh, predict the best price to um, sell his rooms at uh, because he, he believed there was um, su the supply and demand situation said um, if he, if a, I'm not explaining this very well, if, if a uh, tour group didn't turn up and he had a whole lot of empty rooms, what price should he, should he put those out to the marketplace at? Now his problem was putting them out to the marketplace meant uh, sending out faxes to travel agents and then they'd put them in a brochure, et cetera, et cetera. So there was this time lag, a week almost. So I was, I was aware that this fantastic internet thing was happening at the time. And I said to him, well, if you could, um, if you could market those through the internet, um, he said, what's that? You know, this is how it is for you. Um, if, if you could sell them direct to the consumer, and the consumer recognised that uh, this was a bargain. Do you think that would work? He said, oh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, I drove away from that meeting fired up because I could see here was a marketplace that wasn't working efficiently. Uh, for my sins, I'd done a degree in economics, so I had a vague idea about supply, demand, and elasticity and all that stuff. Um, so I immediately started thinking about uh, creating a new marketplace uh, for distressed hotel inventory. That's the way I saw it. So rooms going unsold are no use to anyone. No use to the hotel owner, no use to the consumer who could have got it at half price. In those days, and this is going back a long way, and it's probably, hopefully, um, before most of you people were born, um, in airports, you used to go to a standby lounge where if there happened to be an empty seat because somebody got drunk the night before and, and forgot to turn up for the flight, you could get it at a reduced price. price. Now, airlines had um, got into the whole idea of yield management way before the hotel industry. Um, that probably came because um, airline, the margin in airlines was tighter and um, in the US at least, the chains dominated um, the hotel industry. There wasn't much impetus for change. They kind of uh, ran the industry. So I uh, thought this is worth a shot, so I knocked up a prototype of what I thought might work and went out and started flogging it to uh, independent hotel operators in Sydney, in Australia. Well, I had to go to Sydney. I was living in Brisbane at the time. I had no money. Um, I took the idea to my accountant. Sorry, I went to my accountant to um, uh, put in a tax return because I needed the money desperately to live on. And I blurted out this idea and he said, oh, that could be interesting. 
um, I'll, let's have a look at it. So that was Andrew Bryce, who, who um, turned out to be one of the funders who put their money in, and he's now a multi, multi-millionaire, and he's a happy guy. Um, so um, that's how it started. It was the recognition of a marketplace that wasn't working very well. Uh, it was cutting across all of the norms of that industry at the time. Um, and it was a true disruptive uh, idea. So uh, disruption is good. I said at the talk the other day, um, even even though I don't need to do it, I love the idea of disrupting industries, organisations that have become fat, dumb and happy. Um, and that reflects the real world, I think, that um, even if you guys sitting there in Cairns don't understand that, somebody sitting in India or Uzbekistan or anyone has access to so much data about how the world works, about how business works, somebody will find it. So um, the pace at which these things is happening is ramping up. So there's no luxury of time. If you've got an idea, man, go do it, do it quickly, either prove it or, and if it doesn't work, move on. If you don't do it, somebody else will. The, the number of gaps we've got are diminishing. Awesome.